So you're new to Web3 and maybe you have like a friend who released their new NFT collection or digital collectibles or music in some sort of Web3 format. And they're like, hey, go buy my music or go collect my music, go mint my new collection. And you're like, what are you talking about? Go mint? What are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to be able to collect mint buy music art in web3 so when your friend who has their new collection in web3 or whatever asks you to go support them you can do that because you know how to mint and collect and buy things in web3 Hi, I'm Felisa Zay, and if you're new here, I am a producer, musician, singer-songwriter, Web3 enthusiast, and I am here to teach you today how to be able to go and buy music, art, or whatever you want to consume that's in a Web3 format easily and quickly and without any confusion. Okay, before we get started, I feel like I must say, very, very important, this is not financial advice. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> this is not financial advice. I am not here to advise you on how to get into crypto investments and things like that. This is not about that. I am literally just showing you how you can go and consume art, music, whatever is your liking that comes in a crypto, not crypto, that comes in a Web3 <laughs> format. And I'll give you a little explanation real, real quick of digital collectibles and how they relate to NFTs and then we'll just get right into it. So, digital collectibles. Basically, we're coming into a realm where music, art, it can be consumed in a new way, online, in the web, as a digital collectible. And when we say that, we're basically talking about the digital equivalent of like a record. So back in the day, if you remember, we used to go to a record store and buy a record, a physical record of music. And then you would go take it home and consume it. And you buying that record didn't mean that you own the music. It didn't mean that you had any stake in the music necessarily. You were just buying it and supporting the artist who put it out. So that kind of got lost with streaming and all that stuff. And so now we're in a realm where Web3 offers technologies that include, please don't get mad at me, NFTs. <laughs> And NFTs simply are non-fungible tokens. We'll get into, I'll do another video about this at some point. But basically, a digital collectible is basically, in the most simplistic way to say it, a more layered experience of music, art, whatever you're collecting. Now, it depends on what the creator decides to do in terms of utilizing the technology with that digital collectible. For instance, with myself, I created an experience around a visual album that I produced. And in Web3, if you collect or mint the digital collectible that is associated with this visual album, you will be able to unlock an experience that has many layers to it, including puzzles and just getting you involved with the visuals. There's anagrams hidden in the visuals. And so, if I just released that as a streaming release, you wouldn't be able to unlock an experience like that. But the digital collectible allows me to create like a key to an experience that you get to unlock and have fun with that has achievements and it I basically gamified the experience. And so that's just what I did. There's a lot of artists out here doing a lot of really cool things with digital collectibles, with blockchain technology in that way. And I won't go any deeper because that's for another day, but that's just a really quick explanation of why this matters and why this matters to you if you're a consumer or why it matters to you if you're an artist thinking about maybe how to put your music out there. And that's the most simplistic explanation I'm gonna give in this video because this video is not about NFTs and it is not about explaining Web3 technology, although I will do some videos on that. This video today is on how to mint your first digital collectible. I'm just showing you how to be able to do it. So when your friend, like me, goes, hey, buy my digital collectible and experience my music in a different way, because that's my whole point of always doing things, you can go and stream my music all day long. But 
You can't go and experience it in an immersive, interactive experience like I've created in Web3. And so if I tell you about it and you're like, oh, I want to try that out. But then you're like, mm, I don't have a wallet. I don't even know what a wallet is. I don't know how to, how to go and buy your digital collectible. You'll be able to do it after watching this video. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. There are platforms out here that make it easier to onboard new Web3 users. And so today I chose Exodus because another platform called Ramp that is a great onboarding, they call it an on-ramp platform um, that helps new users open up a wallet. Uh, this is one of their partners. And so I, this is what I chose. So this is what we're gonna do, let's do it. Um, I don't have an Exodus wallet, so I am doing this right along with you. Um, so let's go. So how do we get started? All right, so we're over here. This is how we get started. I'm going to choose the Web3 wallet option, which is to install it on my Chrome browser. It also installs on Brave, which is cool if you are not a Chrome user. Um, but you could also do this on your phone. Um, they have an Apple store. They have an Apple and Google Play option. I don't like doing crypto stuff on my phone personally, but um, you can do that if you want to. And then there's a desktop option. Again, none of this is financial advice. So please be safe and please take care. That's another video to talk about security. Today, I'm just gonna show you how to open your wallet. And here we go. I already have a said wallet, but I am showing you how to open a new one. And so I'm gonna open a new one along with you using the Exodus wallet. So here we go. We are installing the Exodus. Okay, here we go. So it's here and we're going to add it to Chrome because that's what I'm using. If you're using Brave, you can add it to Brave. I don't know how that works. I don't use Brave, but if you are, go for it. All right, so it is now loaded and been added to my Chrome extensions. And now this screen automatically popped up after it was done loading. It loaded and then this screen automatically popped up, just so you know. And so now we are here. So the only Web3 wallet you'll ever need access, securely access Web3 applications across the most popular networks. Awesome, let's do it. Let's do it. And I know if you were doing this by yourself, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it with you. So it's gonna be okay. All right, one home for your NFTs. And this is the big reason why I'm showing you how to do this. Again, don't get scared by the word NFTs, digital collectibles, digital products. This is where they will live in your wallet. wallet. So next, let's keep going. Um, this is the part I'm not talking about in this video, which is trading and things like that. That's You can do that kind of stuff, but that is at your own risk and this is not financial advice. So that's for a different video, different YouTube channel. All right, we have your back with 24. Okay, cool, I love that. 24 seven human support, love it. Okay, now here they go. I have a wallet or create a new wallet. In your case, you are going to create a new wallet. I'm going to create a new wallet with you because you do not have one yet. So here we go. Okay, create a unique password. How to keep your password safe. So I could go into a whole video about safety and security. Not gonna do this in this. Just know you need to keep your information safe. Use a password keeper, write it down, put it in the safe, lock it up behind the key. Lock it up behind the key? Safe, that's what the safe is. Um, my point is keep your password information safe. All of this information is important because you, as an owner of a, soon to be owner of a decentralized wallet, wallet, you are the custodian of your own assets that will go in this wallet. And assets, by assets, I mean um, these digital collectibles and products are digital assets. So you will be responsible for them. You, not me. So make sure you keep the information safe. All right, so now I'm gonna put in my password, like I said, and I'm copying it into there. Boom. Next, memorize your password. Okay, I definitely memorized it. Thank you very much for the reminder. Boom. Make sure you keep it safe. Lock it up. Don't use a password that you use on every other site either. Again, that's another video, but it's very tempting for me to talk about it. Do not, okay, I'm not gonna go there. Be safe. Okay, so now, connection made easy. Exodus will connect to any Web3 app, even if you select MetaMask or Phantom. You can disable this in settings. Oh, cool, that's nice, I like that. Okay, so this is gonna make it easier for you. All right, going forward, here we go. Ooh, I love this, I love all of this. This is why I chose this, because I 
had researched that it was easier and it looks like it is and I love it. Okay, so what's happening here is immediately, as soon as we set this up, um, Exodus is giving us some options. So I'm gonna do these options because this is what you should do if you're gonna use this as your main wallet for your Web3 experiences and explorations. Um, I am going to do what they said and pin it. Oops, I'm gonna pin it, pin it. Let me see, where's Exodus there? Boom, pin it so I can easily find it up there. And now we also have your, they, they had a little pop-up here, which is your wallet popping up, fund your wallet. So they have some options here. They give you here, pin Nexus, we just did that. Fund your wallet and then connect to Web3. So we're gonna do all that. Um, we're gonna do that right now. Let's first fund the wallet. So um, first, you're gonna have to buy some um, Web3 enabled currency, crypto. And again, this is not financial advice, but uh, you do need some to be able to buy certain things. So like for instance, with my digital collectible over here is in ETH, Ethereum. And so we're just gonna deal with Ethereum for this example. I'm not gonna get into explaining all the different types of crypto, that's another video, but here is mine and it's in Ethereum. So that's what we're gonna do in terms of being able to buy a digital collectible. So today we're gonna pretend like we're trying to go, not gonna pretend, I will buy one of these for myself so that you guys can see how it works. So 0.05 ETH, let's go. I'm gonna go back to Exodus and I'm gonna go buy. So that's how you are going to fund your wallet is by buying some crypto. Okay, so let's go and buy. Buy. There we go. So we've got USD to Seoul. So like I told you, remember I mentioned Ramp earlier, Ramp Network. It's using Ramp to help you onboard into um, crypto. So let's just pretend you're in the United States like me. And so you're going to be using USD. Um, but wherever you are, uh, you'll use whatever your currency is. But for me, it's USD. We're going to buy Ethereum. So you see, you you send, and we're gonna change this amount, but you send the amount that you want to buy, basically. You send means to buy the um, currency over here, which I'm switching to ETH, okay? And it's explaining to you one ETH equals one thousand two hundred and ten dollars. We don't need to get one ETH. You don't need. You don't need that much ETH. Um, how much did I say the digital collectible is that we're going to buy today? It's 0 0.05 ETH, right? We're going to ETH because that is what the um, digital collectible is being sold in or minted in. And oh, we get an option. I think I'm going to use Ramp. Yep, I'm going to use Ramp. Because like I told you before, that is why I came over to Exodus because I was looking at Partners of Ramp. Um, this is prompting to do 100. You don't have to do 100 to buy this. Um, this collectible is 0 0.05 ETH. So if I did this, that's 80. That should be enough. We'll find out. We'll put more if we need it. But I put a little extra just so that um, for gas fees, which is sort of like the easiest way to think of that is like taxes. Um, but Felice, it's decentralized. What do you mean taxes? We're not getting into that today. We will get into that another day. Let's use RAMP because I like RAMP. All right, so we're gonna use RAMP to get this whole party started here. Um, and so we're gonna continue. Remember, we're doing this together. I've never done this, um, but I'm not scared because I am in the Web3 space all the time. And this is a very, similar process with most most platforms although this is a lot i must say so far is a lot easier more streamlined so now it's taking us to ramp which is where this all began which is why i decided to use exodus um, for this tutorial so ramp is loading all right let's try this again this has been quite an adventure i won't take you through the whole adventure with me but let's try this again so we are going to fund the exodus wallet so we had a little faux pas here and the sound went off on my video. I have no idea why. So I'm going to, you're not gonna see the, the voice synced. I'm not gonna refilm this because this was a whole ordeal in itself. But basically what I'm explaining here is that we are now going to fund the Exodus wallet with MoonPay. That's why I went with Ramp in the first place because I knew they were a trusted platform. However, that user experience is too daunting, I think, for someone who's new to the space. So as you can see here, 
we are going to switch and utilize the moon pay on ramp option and by on ramp i mean just the option to buy crypto with a debit card so that's what we're going to use in this instance and that's what we're going to use in this video and so now i'm just going to go through the process of entering my information which again i'm going to blank everything out because that's ain't none of your business I'm just kidding. um that's not your business and here we go so i'm putting in my email and then i'm putting the verification code that the email sent me and now i'm entering my um my basic details now this is something this is part of the on-ramp situation um, in terms of buying crypto with a credit card or debit card in this way it wants to get our personal information you know don't let that process scare you off um, they just it's called KYC know your customer it's just making sure you're a real person and that is necessary if you are buying crypto in this way again always use trusted platforms in this case MoonPay is a trusted platform it has a good reputation I've used MoonPay before and so that's why I am moving forward with the process okay one more thing I wanted to share is then there is the process of once you enter in your credit card information or your debit card and I would suggest debit card they'd suggest it as well that's more likely to get approved and when we say approved it's just that some platforms uh, specifically I'll talk about it later chase does not like most a lot of crypto purchases and platforms so you might have an issue with chase I'm just gonna tell you that right now I couldn't use my chase card MasterCard worked better Visa seemed to have a lot of issues in terms of approving this purchase and again the reason why there are issues with purchases being approved is again this is a very new space that's why I say over and over do your own research and make sure you know the platform so right now it's having me enter an amount that it deposited in my bank account to confirm that the I own the bank account so that's okay don't worry about that that is a normal process and I just want to reiterate the issue with ramp I'm glad this happened on this video that's why I did this video for you to help you with this process of setting up a wallet and any hurdles that I run into in this video is one less hurdle that you have to run into so if you decide to still go with ramp go at it at your own you know inconvenience because it made me have to um, it was saying that I was gonna have to wait 14 hours for them to approve the transaction and that's just too long so we're going with MoonPay and spoiler alert MoonPay works out just fine and now we are getting into the last steps and I will let myself take it from here because the microphone comes back after this <laughs> here we are now I've put in my credit card information it's all in here now agree and we are going to buy the crypto that will allow us to purchase make purchases with our wallet so I am buying it's saying to double check and again you should always check always do your own research I'm showing you how to do this but don't take my word for it you don't know me or maybe you do and if you do that's great but still go do your own research I'm just showing you the process so that it's a little bit clearer okay confirm order it's a journey here it's definitely a journey it's the climb <sighs> okay it worked it says it was delivered ordered verified processed delivered woohoo okay so again this is my first time using Exodus, so I'm learning this with you. So we are gonna return to Exodus. We're gonna follow what they said. So they're saying return to Exodus. Okay, now let's see if it's in our wallet, which is the really fun part of crypto, <laughs> is just seeing things actually happen. So one thing I wanna make a note of, oh, and it says payment complete, yay. So if I bring this up, Let's see what our balance is. Yes, okay, so it says $76.38. So what I want to really make clear is that these are all emerging technologies. So I would be remiss not to tell you that I did run into some hurdles while I was doing this. Initially, I was using a different on-ramp 
a different platform um, when I was adding the funds to the account. And I'm just gonna show you this real quick just so you see it and just so you know what problems I ran into. So when I initially did it and I was going to um, ETH, um, there were two options. There was Ramp and there was MoonPay. No offense to Ramp, but didn't work for me with Ramp. It, it was gonna take like 14 hours for them to approve my transaction. And I just know somebody new to this would get really discouraged with that, I think. So that was my experience. So if you decide to use Ramp and that happens, Please don't come crying to me. Um, <laughs> so I ended up using MoonPay instead. Um, and MoonPay, as you can see, just went through. Now, it didn't go through without a couple of hurdles. I have noticed certain bank banks don't like crypto transactions, Chase being one of them. Again, not financial advice, just speaking from my own experience, Chase does not like approving any of these, well, unless it's like Coinbase. And Coinbase is a very popular centralized exchange for crypto. So. I ended up having to use my T-Mobile bank account. It seems like MasterCard works a bit better. Again, this is not expert like insider advice. I'm just telling you, the di I tried different debit cards. Certainly it likes debit cards better. And even with the credit, with the debit card that went through for my T-Mobile account that has a MasterCard debit card, I still had to call and say that I approved the transaction because at first it thought, at first it, it declined because it thought that it may have been suspicious activity. So there's a lot of suspicious things that go on in the crypto spaces in terms of, and this is like in any space where money and things are involved. So you have to be very careful. Like I said, do your research and understand that if something declines, it might be because your bank is trying to protect you. I mean, Chase is on a whole nother level though. I don't know about Chase. I'm not gonna talk about that, but Chase won't, Chase won't, just won't let you do it, period. It said, didn't even say like call to approve. It just said, we just don't, we just don't let you do this. And that's Chase's prerogative. But that is another story about talking about the power of being the custodian of your own assets. I'm not gonna get into that story today. But in terms of getting you onboarded into Web3 so that you can be able to experience digital collectibles and different experiences, metaverse experiences that require crypto to be able to get in, this I think is the easiest way to do it. I'm not saying that Exodus is the only way to do it. I'm just saying I was looking for an easy wallet to open Maybe I'll do another one of these with another wallet. Maybe I'll do a MetaMask one at some point. But right now I'm just wanted to find something that was super easy for somebody who doesn't know anything about crypto and you just wanna use a credit card to fund your wallet. This seems pretty easy. Just be aware that you may have some issues in the terms of the actual funding, finding the right account that will work. I find MasterCard debit seems to work the best. Um, definitely not Chase. Sorry, Chase Bankers. I bank with Chase as well. And it just, they don't, it doesn't like it. And in terms of the on-ramp system, the platform that we use to be able to buy the crypto through Exodus, it what MoonPay worked in this in this sense. So I would go with MoonPay. No offense to Ramp, but Ramp did not work for me. So that was just a little side note. Now we have the money in the account. Or in the account. We have the money, we have the crypto in the wallet and you have the wallet set up. This is essentially your Web3 gateway into Web3. Now you're wondering, what do we do next? So we've got the wallet over here. So, and we and we put, we installed it into the um, Chrome browser. And again, you can use this with Brave or you can use this with your phone. However, I would do this whole next thing that I'm gonna do on your browser, just because I know it works that way. <laughs> if you wanna do it on your phone, that's up to you, that's your prerogative. And this video is not covering that. So here is how you would go about buying a Web3 digital collectible now with your new wallet. So here's my Web3 collection that is out right now. And it is an interactive Dolby Atmos visual album, which is the first of its kind in the world actually, not just in Web3. That's a whole nother video for me to talk about, but if you were to come to this page, here's the website up here, you could see, and you wanted to experience this, you saw as soon as I came, Exodus, my wallet popped up, right? And so over here, you see all the information about the project. I'm gonna close that. But you see over here, 
it tells you how much it is. It's 0 0.05 ETH, which you know now is about, I don't know, 60-ish bucks. And you may be going, wow, that's a lot for maybe music. No, this is more than just like buying this visual album. There's a whole experience attached to this. It's a five level experience um, with puzzles and all kinds of stuff. But that's the point of Web3, that you can do a lot more than just putting out just visuals and music. You could do, you can create an experience with it. So that's what's going on here. Oh, hey, um, yeah, I look a little different because I filmed the rest of the video and then the next day as I was editing realized that I thought the whole process was more complicated than it actually was. So I'm gonna spare you the complications and just give you the right version of how to do this right now. And now I am going to connect my wallet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the Exodus wallet is connected here and we've made Exodus our priority um, wallet here and I believe that's over here on setting yeah I prioritized Exodus and this is for anyone who has a different wallet if you want Exodus to connect you have to prioritize it um, because I also have MetaMask and so if I didn't have this my MetaMask would connect instead so that's a different kind of wallet and so I'm gonna get out of here and so this is my again my Exodus wallet and I'm gonna close and you hit connect wallet here and then you just hit MetaMask. So even though you don't have a MetaMask, that's okay. That's how Exodus connects. It connects the same way that MetaMask connects. So just hit MetaMask and boom, because it recognizes that your Exodus wallet is connected um, via the Chrome extension, it automatically connects to your wallet. So always make sure, I think I've said this before, be careful where you connect your wallet. Make sure it's a trusted site, organization, project, business, artists, whatever. Um, but once you have vetted it and you know that you want to collect, buy, mint um, one of these digital tokens, NFTs, um, you can do that by connecting your wallet. So in this case, we're going to buy a, or mint or collect, um, but essentially buy for, the, for those of you from the traditional sense of the world of buying things. We're going to buy this digital collectible. So you are going to hit buy you are going to you see right here it's coming up your wallet is right here there are some network fees that are um, just not that much 0 0.002 and change of ETH you can go do that conversion if you want to see um, and I'm not gonna get into what that means right now but um, there are network fees when you are making transactions on the blockchain and now we are going to hit approve and boom there it is. You collected your first digital collectible if you were following along and did this with me. And that's it. That's how you mint and collect a digital collectible in Web3. All right, you did it. You did it. You collected your first digital collectible by setting up your first Web3 wallet. Wallet. And it was a challenging process for me on my end because I had to go through a lot of hurdles that popped up and I had to figure out like bank account issues, like it wasn't working with my Chase account. So I had to go and use a different debit card. And I did that for you so that you don't have to go through it. So if you're a Chase banker, it probably won't work. Chase doesn't like crypto at all. If you are using a Visa debit card, it tended to not work for me. MasterCard worked better. Not saying that's a steadfast rule, but just keep that in mind. Another thing to remember is don't be afraid of the KYC process, the know your customer process. That is the process that on-ramp um, platforms like MoonPay use to make sure you're a real person and you're not doing various things in the Web3 space. They wanna make sure you're a real person. So make sure you're using a trusted platform like MoonPay and before you do anything like that and remember to do your own research, don't trust me, go research MoonPay yourself and just be prepared that it will ask you for personal information to make sure you're a real person, like your, your social security number. It's going to check that the bank account that you actually own it by depositing a small amount into the account. So just make sure that you are prepared for that, that that's gonna be part of the process. And then don't get discouraged. If it doesn't work with your credit card or debit card and debit cards tend to work easier to fund your wallet try a different one because just sometimes certain bank accounts don't like dealing with cryptocurrencies and that's just the way it is like i said with chase 
So I will tell you though, that it did work for me and it worked with my T-Mobile bank account. So if you have a T-Mobile account, T-Mobile doesn't mind crypto, I guess. And it is a MasterCard debit with that account. So like I said, I think that does work better. And yeah, so I'm just excited for you. There are so many great projects out here, musical, visual art, all kinds of different things that artists are creating in the Web3 space like myself. And it has so many layers to these projects, so many utilities, so many access passes and special experiences that you can experience when you collect a digital collectible, AKA NFT. Don't get scared by the word NFT. NFT is a technology, it's not a product. And so that technology is powering products in Web3 that are utilizing the technology of tokenization to create special experiences like mine. And I hope you will go and collect my digital collectible for my Dolby Atmos visual album, which is the first of its kind in the world. I'll do another video about that whole thing. That's it. I'm Felice. I'm Felice Lise. And this has been a video about how to open up your first or set up, set up your first wallet. And I hope it helped. And if you have any questions, or comments or problems, please put them in the comments. I would love to support you as much as I can. Follow me for more content like this. I will be posting more content about Web3 as it relates to art and music. I will be posting more content about my music, posting content for other creators about how to get the best sound and how to do music production and things like that as well. So follow me here, hit the bell, subscribe, share it with a friend. Share Web3, the, the joy of Web3 with a friend. Okay, bye. Smash that subscribe button. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna. <laughs>